the Sao Paulina Experimental Plantation of the National Research Council in Fulonica hosts a selection of rosemary plants characterized by different essential oils with specific chemical composition. These plants provide raw material for essential oil extraction. The greatest amount of volatile compounds is within rosemary leaves, which must be separated from the stem before steam distillation to increase essential oil yield. The material must be weighed to estimate the extraction yield of the distillation process. After water addition, rosemary twigs are put on a grid at the bottom of the distillator and water is brought to boiling point. Hot steam is forced through the plant material to extract volatile essential oil constituents. The rosemary essential oil and the underlying hydrolate obtained as byproduct of the extraction can be collected and used for different purposes. Different plant tissues exhibit different chemical composition. Young tissues differ from mature ones, and those healthy parts of the plant differ from damaged ones. For these reasons, collected material must be carefully divided and separately analyzed. To determine the chemical composition of each type of tissue, solvent extraction is performed. The material must be weighed and then an organic solvent is added to ensure the extraction of the volatile constituents from plant tissues. The sample undergoes three cycles of sonication and then is kept under rotary agitation for 24 hours. Centrifugation separates plant material from the extraction solvent, which is then recovered and transferred into a screw cap GCMS glass vial. The sample is now ready for GCMS analysis. By this technique, it is possible to determine the different compounds characterizing each part of a plant in terms of volatile fraction. Three different chromatograms showing specific terpene profiles result from the analysis of the folia, cortical and xylem tissue of rosemary. Filamentous fungi are widespread organisms often associated to health risks in humans and animals. In this clip, we show how to test the antifungal activity of rosemary essential oil. A fungal suspension of known concentration was previously prepared under sterile conditions. This suspension is pipetted onto PDA solid medium in a Petri dish and homogeneously spread on the agar surface by using a sterile loop. With the help of a sterile cork borer, the agar surface is drilled and a small piece of agar is removed, obtaining a central well. An aliquot of rosemary essential oil is pipetted into the well The petri is then sealed and incubated at 27 degrees Celsius for a time period depending on the microorganism species selected for experimentation. After proper incubation, the fungus growth appears strongly inhibited from the treatment with rosemary essential oil. Essential oils can be trapped into solid formulates to prevent their volatility. 
an aliquot of rosemary essential oil is dropped into a steel jar containing the beta cyclodextrin powder previously added. After the addition of a water ethanol solution, a steel ball is placed into the jar. The jars must be firmly clamped into a mixer mill set to a frequency of about 20 Hz for 15 minutes. Mechanical mixing allows essential oil complexation with beta cyclodextrin molecules. A powdery sample of encapsulated essential oil is obtained at the end of the procedure. These powdery formulations can be used to perform lab tests on different materials susceptible to fungal growth. The beta cyclodextrin essential oil complex is placed in the lower sector of a two-split petri as antifungal treatment. The same is done with free beta cyclodextrin as reference for the non-treated sample. A saturated salt solution must be added to both the dishes just around the cap containing the formulate to keep humidity at high levels. This will ensure fungal proliferation to occur in short time and will also activate the formulate, promoting the essential oil release from the beta cyclodextrin. Being organic material, paper is susceptible to fungal attack and was selected as target material for this experiment. Sterilized paper samples must be placed in the upper sector of each Petri dish. A fungal suspension of known concentration was prepared ahead of time. An aliquot of this suspension must be pipetted onto each rectangular square previously outlined on the paper samples. The Petri dishes must be sealed to prevent possible contamination and placed at 27 degrees Celsius for incubation. The proliferation of the fungus is clearly visible to the naked eye for the non-treated paper sample, whereas no visible growth can be observed on paper exposed to essential oil complexed with beta-cyclodextrin.